thank you everyone for uh, this Law Bank hosted Thomson Reuters lunchtime program. We are excited to have two of kind of my favorite people to work with. Actually, they are two of my favorite people to work with in uh, Super Lawyers and also in Thomson Reuters. Reuters. We have Stacy Woodard. She's an, uh, a senior associate publisher of, su of Super Lawyers, specifically working with Colorado Super Lawyers, that magazine. Uh, we also have Bar uh, Barry Foyer and she's an account executive with uh, Thomson Reuters, and they both are going to split their time equally with us today, sharing a little bit about what they do to support the health and the wealth and the happiness of your small law firm. So thanks again, Jay, for, um, for letting us schedule this program and for you know bringing us all together like this. I can't wait to see all these lawyers on Super Lawyers. It's going to be um awesome. Um, so no promises, but Stacy, um, please, please kick us off when you're ready. Absolutely. So um, I am a senior associate publisher with Super Lawyers. Um, I'm one of two who work in the state of Colorado. So uh, some of you will get notices, emails from me, and some of you will hear from my colleague, Susan Wanzak. We do the same thing. We're just kind of split up by geography. So my role is to um, really kind of all things super lawyers. I work with attorneys who uh, wanna know what they can be doing to make their chances better of getting on the super lawyers list. Those who do make the list, I work with them to make sure, you know, cover any questions that they have about how they ended up on the list, how the selection process works, what they can do to, um, to kind of stay on the radar from year to year once they've been selected, what they can do to market that and kind of promote that because Super Lawyers is such an excellent third party endorsement and then really anything you know else that they wanna talk about. And then, um, so I'll talk a little bit today about the selection process, how that works and then the marketing that's around Super Lawyers once someone does end up on the list and then I'll pass it to Barry and she will talk to us about um, Westlaw, I, because it's a smaller group, I actually just wanted to check in and see if anyone has any specific things they'd like me to cover about super lawyers today. So I'll give you all a couple of seconds to chime in if you want. Well, certainly the nominating process. Okay. And the do's and don'ts. Okay. Um, you know, as a community at Law Bank, we're really want to promote all of our members. Uh -huh. um, in the right way okay. without running afoul of any, uh, you know, yeah. rules and regulations or something that's gonna, <laughs> that's gonna then disqualify anybody. Okay. So okay. That, that'd be my thing. Sure. Anyone else? I also, I thought I saw something about something changed with respect to nominations, either being able to see or change your nominations rather than having to have them all listed out and submitting it once and then that's it. Or something right. like that. Yes, I am gonna probably try to log into a particular attorney's uh, uh, account so we can look at his nominations. But yeah, the, the big difference there is that our nomination process used to be, uh, the nomination window used to be three to four months, um, but we've changed that. Now you can nominate all year um, up to our cutoff in July. And you don't have to submit your nominations all at once. You can log into your dashboard and kind of do them as you choose. And um, when you log in, it'll show you how many you've nominated, how many you have left to nominate. So let me show my screen. Hey, Stacy, I wanted to just, while you're switching screens on this, do you want uh -huh. me to monitor the chat for you? That would um, be great. Okay, I'll do that for you and jump in. A few things to put on your radar, I think that would be helpful is helping everybody understand the difference between rising stars and super lawyers and kind Absolutely. of how everybody's eligible in just mm -hmm. in different ways. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing would be um, uh, the data verification, because I think that's a big spot that a lot of people don't realize if they don't do that, then you don't appear. And I think that's where a lot of the misinformation comes from of why was I not listed? Cause I didn't pay and it, and it wasn't that way at all. It was cause you didn't turn your information in. Right. Okay, cool. I can do that. Uh, okay, so everyone sees my screen, yes? 
Thompson Reuters lunchtime program. Okay, so the selection process, what I really want you all to take away from this today, if, if nothing else, is that the selection process is research driven, peer influenced, it's a patented process. We've been taken to court and proven that it is valid and that it's very much not pay to play. So it's a four stage process. The first stage is nomination and creation of the candidate pool. So how does someone get in the candidate pool? Either by being nominated by their peers, uh, managing partners get surveys to fill out, the research team does their own due diligence and very often you know, they run across attorneys and, and study them. And an attorney can proactively go create a profile with super lawyers if they've never been selected and put information in about the categories that we're looking at. Any attorney who has been selected automatically has a profile and should absolutely be logging in here every year to update their categories so that they're giving the research team as much as possible to go on. So once an attorney is in the, not, the candidate pool and, and the do's and don'ts, you asked about those. So you are not supposed to lobby for nominations. That is, that is frowned upon. We obviously don't know when you're doing it and it happens, but the point, you know, nominations are important, but they're not everything. It's attorneys should not be out there asking people to nominate them. They should be doing these other things that I'm gonna be talking about because these are really the best ways to get in front of our research team. Um, in terms of the nomination window, I did talk about that. It's, it's up until July. An attorney can nominate up to seven attorneys within their own firm as long as they're nominating the same number of attorneys outside their firm. So what does that tell us? That nominations are great, but they're not everything because that would give large firms a big leg up. That's not what it's about. It's about getting the biggest group possible so that we know when we narrow it down, we've got a really good group. So seven within the firm, seven outside the firm, and then seven for rising stars. What we mean by rising stars is 40 years of age or younger or practicing 10 years or fewer. The point of rising stars is that there's a lot of competition out there and we're choosing a very small number of attorneys. So we want the younger attorneys to have a chance. And that's why we have the rising stars in place. Stacey, so once can I we stop you right there one sec? Absolutely. So given that Law Bank, we're all just this collective of independent law firms, mm -hmm. the seven and seven rule up, not apply or? You, uh, uh, or uh, just everyone can nominate seven attorneys for, seven. Right, for super lawyers and seven for rising stars. So does that answer the question? Okay. What we're saying is in a big firm, if they nominate within their firm, that's fine, but they have to nominate outside their firm. So you guys just kind of aren't part of the big firm part of it. So once we have the pool in place, you'll see these categories right here. Our research team dives in and they evaluate every attorney based on these key categories. They are assigning points throughout this. There's this whole secret sauce that I don't get to know about, but they're looking for well-rounded attorneys and they're assigning points. At the end of that, they add up the points we go into our evaluation phase. The top point earners for that year are asked to be our blue ribbon panel of attorneys who will look at the list and make sure we're not missing anything obvious for that year. And at that point, we select the top 5% of point earners for the super lawyers list. And then anyone 40 years of age or younger or practicing 10 years or fewer will go into another pool and we select the top two and a half percent for the rising stars list. Okay, any questions about that? Okay, so that's how the selection process works. I so, actually have a question. Um, yes. I put it into the chat, but um, how you have on there that you look at verdicts and resolutions and you, or settlement or verdicts, I'm sorry, and you look at transactions, but frankly, transactions aren't logged in anywhere. Settlements are not logged in anywhere. I mean, you can find a verdict for sure, but I mean, 99% of my cases settle outside of court in confidential settlements, mm -hmm. and you would never know that. So okay. how would you guys even know who a small person like me is representing or how many of my cases settle versus how many transactions? I mean, if I write someone a residential lease, that's a transaction. 
Mm -hmm. but you're never going to know that I did that. So these 12 categories, they're, they're, they're the categories that they're looking at, understanding that not every category is relevant to every single attorney. So it's, it's again, it, it's not like you have to have, it's, they're like 12 buckets. And it's not like every bucket has to be filled, but the ones that are relevant to you, they're looking at. And, and again, I'm not part of the research team, so I don't actually know the secret sauce, but they understand that every attorney is different and every attorney's practice is different. And quite honestly, that's part of why we have the evaluation phase is because some attorneys aren't going to get recognized as much with some of this. And that's where some of the some of our other attorneys can mention them and that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I get it. And when I show you how to update your profile, I'll, remind me. And there's a place where you can put things in that if they need to be confidential, you can say this is confidential. Don't ever publish this. So Mark, you look like you had a question. Yeah, related to uh, Carolyn's. Uh, representative clients. Now, I don't represent Facebook or, you know, General Motors. I'm a solo, like most of the other people on the call. Mm -hmm. How can we list representative clients um, without uh, violating confidentiality? Even if we tell you not to publish it, we violate confidentiality. I mean, if I worked for Gibson, Dunn, and Crutcher, you'd know who the representative clients of the firm are because everyone knows who they represent, but not right. me. And you're not big public companies. Right. So you're going to you're going to focus on the other things that you can tell us about you. It's not these these are just small parts of it. So don't get too hung up on you got to have everything covered, the parts that are relevant to your practice and when I get into kind of what you can be doing on your end, um, you'll see what you can you can you can email our research team with what you think is relevant for your practice. You can send your CV to them, etc. Okay, so again, um, two lists: the super lawyers list, top five percent; rising stars, top two point five percent. We select from only private practice attorneys, seventy plus business and consumer practice areas, all law firm sizes, and not pay to play. Okay, so. On this note of what can you do on your end? Every attorney who's ever been selected has a profile in our dashboard. Every attorney who has not been selected can go in and request an access code so that they can uh, create their own profile. When you log into this, and I'll show you kind of a live version here in a second, you can go to edit information and then click on research evaluation categories. And then you will see all of these 12 categories that we've just talked about. And you can put information in there. I usually recommend going back five years and putting in what you think is relevant. But you can also keep our research team informed. You can email your resume or your CV to them. You can include them on press releases or anything that you do. I like to tell my clients, blow up their email if you want. That's what they're there for. They want information about attorneys. And so you don't have to worry that you're sending them too much. Okay, so I'm gonna actually get out of this and I'm gonna show you, sorry, let me move this out of the way. I'm gonna get in here. This is Mark Kaplan. I'm sure some of you are familiar with him. And he has agreed to let me show you his profile today so that I can kind of illustrate some of this. So he's been on our list for a long time, um, but he's really good about getting in here and putting this information in. So when you, when you first come to Super Lawyers, if you don't have an account with us, you're going to click on four lawyers up here, and then you're going to request an access code on the page that that brings up. Once you get that access code, you're gonna be able to create an account and log in and you're gonna put your basic information in here. You can put a summary, you can put a photo, et cetera. Information about your firm, bar information. If you are 40 years of age or younger, be sure to put your birth year in here, here because um, the, the Rising Stars is 40 years of age or younger or practicing 10 years or fewer. And I see people fall off the rising stars list because we didn't know how old they were. So just put your birth year in there. And then he's chosen his practice areas, which is relevant to his marketing with us, et cetera. If we click over here if, on this page, if we go up here and we click on research evaluation categories, you're gonna see the categories we've just been looking at. So you've got experience and educational background. 
You've got bar and professional activity. You've got verdicts and settlements, not super relevant to him. And he doesn't necessarily want those published. So he doesn't put those in there. Representative clients, that was a question. He doesn't put those in there. They're individual clients. That is not relevant to us selecting him as a super lawyer selectee. Transactions, he doesn't add that either, but he does have his licenses and certifications, his pro bono work, his honors and awards. There's a space for other outstanding achievements. He hasn't filled that in, he probably could. And then writings. So Mark has been on our list as long as we've had it in Colorado. And please note that the last time he was in here updating this was November of 2020 before when we were coming out with the new list again. So he is constantly getting in here and updating this information, even though he's on the list every year, because he's making sure he's doing what he needs to do to get his information in front of us. Any questions about this part? Okay. So once an attorney is selected for super lawyers, someone asked the question about um, data verification. We do two publications each year in Colorado. Super Lawyers Magazine, which goes to pretty much every licensed attorney in the state. And then we do a special supplement in the Denver Post, uh, which goes to about 350,000 people. It's basically, this is one of my favorite publications that we do in the country in terms of host publications. It's not just a section in a magazine, it's actually another issue of Super Lawyers Magazine that gets inserted into the Denver Post. Every attorney who is selected to the super lawyers list for that year will automatically get a free listing in both of these publications if they verify their data. And the reason for that, is, and they have to date, they have to verify it every year. The reason for that is things change. I mean, you know, addresses change, practice areas change, especially this day and age, uh, which firm an attorney is with changes. So we will not print that information unless the attorney has told us for that year, yes, this information is correct. And that can be verified either by the information we sent you in the packet, you can just fill it out and send it into us, or you can log into your dashboard and do it there. Okay, any questions about the data verification? Okay. So um, I'm just gonna cover, cause we do have some super lawyer selectees in this group and some non-super lawyer selectees and some super lawyer selectees who do some marketing with us. I'm just gonna cover kind of the basics of once you've been selected to super lawyers, what can you do with that? Um, especially now, you know, things have changed so much and we're in a post pandemic world here and, and everybody's kind of having to move their office wall to online. People have gotten used to looking for attorneys online. Traditional networking has changed dramatically. And um, super lawyers, while it's always been a really good branding play from the perspective of getting in front of your peers for referral purposes, um, the last couple of years, Thomson Reuters has spent millions of dollars making sure that we are also the most visited platform for finding vetted attorneys online when someone is searching. So consumers and attorneys alike are using superlawyers.com to find attorneys, make referrals to attorneys, et cetera. So I mentioned the, the print side of things. That's one way to promote uh, for an attorney to promote their selection especially if they're a first year selectee, being in the magazine in front of their peers with a picture and a description of their practice is huge. Attorneys who wanna get in front of their peers place ads in that magazine. Um, those who wanna get in front of the public business owners in, and other attorneys will brand themselves with super lawyers in the Denver Post. Um, on the online side of things, every attorney who's ever been selected to super lawyers or has been selected at least once We'll get a free profile with us. It's a pretty basic profile, but it ranks really well. If someone Googles that attorney, it's one of the first things that they see. Um, I actually Googled uh, Eric Nelson, the attorney for the, um, for the George Floyd trial yesterday, and his super lawyer's profile has been seen thousands of times lately because it's one of the first things that shows up on Google, which I thought was really interesting. So um, every attorney that gets selected really should consider upgrading this online profile to what we call the premium version, which is the one on the right. Um, we write the content for that. It's uh, very mobile friendly, click to call, click to email. 
and really good way to use us as a third party validation um, and, and help you convert those people who have been referred to you. So I'm gonna pop out of here again and I'm actually gonna show you some real life examples because we have some people here who have premium profiles. So if someone gets referred to Jay and they wanna look Jay up on Google, what do they see? We see his website, we see his website, we see LawBank, we see his LinkedIn, and we have his super lawyers profile. This is gonna be much more effective in converting that person who's been referred to him. You know, if they've been referred to a couple of real estate attorneys and Jay's the one that has a super lawyers profile, chances are good Jay might actually get that call first and be able to take that client if it's a client that he wants. So again, we've written the content for this based on his website and then he's had an opportunity to get in here and um, update it with anything he wants to change. It's click to call, click to email, breaks down everything about his practice down here. Um, similarly, I think I see David Sesserman in here, similar thing. If we Google David, we've got his website, his LinkedIn, and his super lawyer's profile. So, you know, it's it's about managing their what people are seeing and their, their uh, presence on Google. The other place this comes into play, though, is if I go Google, who's the best real estate attorney in Denver? What do we see here? We see your Google ads here. We see paid ads, local results, super lawyers is the first organic result. Um, Google sees super lawyers as a very relevant result for the best attorneys out there. In some practice areas, that's a better thing than in other practice areas. In practice areas where it's contingency based, you know, it's great that we come up, but things like family law or criminal law, if they're searching for the best attorney, they're also probably pretty clear that they need to pay for the best attorney. So they usually convert at a little bit higher rate. So if we do this search, which I enlarge this a little bit, um, these attorneys here, Keith, Andrew, Jody, and Aaron, they've paid for what we call top spots and they're rotating with each other at the top of the page. Anyone below them who has a photo and a phone and an email address, they've got this premium profile that we were just looking at for Jay and David. So Jay, we've, Jay and I have had this conversation. He had the opportunity to buy a top spot here if he wanted, but he didn't feel he needed to, but he is rotating down here on this page right here. So sometimes he'll show up here where Keith is, sometimes he'll be where Mark is, sometimes where Anthony is, et cetera. He rotates in with the other attorneys who have premium profiles. Uh, similarly, if we go biz, Google, who's the best business litigation attorney in Denver? Or actually in this case, I just did business litigation attorney in Denver. Super Lawyers, again, is the first organic result. On this page, you'll see we have five top spots, which is our limit generally, and they're rotating with each other. The attorneys below with the orange buttons, they have what we call a spotlight listing and they're rotating with each other. And then anyone who has the premium profile rotates down here. So David, although he has a premium profile, we have a lot of business litigation attorneys. So he's here. Sometimes he's gonna get pushed off the first page just because we have a lot of attorneys who are doing this particular practice area. But that's kind of the basics of how Super Lawyers marketing works. Um, there are some other products, but these are kind of the ones attorneys start with and tend to really stick with year after year because it's just another place where consumers and other attorneys are seeing them. Other attorneys use the site on a regular basis to make referrals but also of course the public's ending up here through these Google searches. Any questions about the marketing aspect? So, so what's the difference between spotlight listing and the- um, The top spot? The ones above it? Yeah, top spots are just limited top to five top. in each Metro and practice area. So when we're sold out, attorneys can then buy the spotlight just to ensure that they're still staying up close to the top of the page um, and not getting pushed off to the second page or what have you. So the, the big difference is where they show up on the page and the pricing is usually less on the spotlights because they're lower. Okay. One thing too, Stacy, that I use specifically for law firm marketing are your badges. And I, I've always thought it was nice that super lawyers doesn't charge for those. And that's especially important for small law firm owners. Um, yes. You know, I think Martindale used to charge about 600 a year to lease them 
5280 is right about that, that amount too for top lawyers. So I think that's pretty um, amazing that Super Lawyers has left that free. Um, yeah, you know, the idea has been kicked around before about charging for them. I won't lie, but we aren't, we aren't, we aren't doing it, at least at this point. And I will show you all how to get to um, those badges. So right, just, just to make sure it's a badge, what you can put at the bottom of your email or your website. Yes. yes. Just so you know, uh, 5280 doesn't charge for them. They've given them to me for free for the past five years. So Great. I don't know. Yeah. I, so, I would be interested to know who you're speaking with because I get charged. <laughs> so any attorney, as I mentioned, you, you can always log into your dashboard to get your badge. Um, but the other really easy way to get it is if you've been selected, Google yourself, put super lawyers behind it and find your profile, whether it's an upgraded one or um, just the basic one and just scroll down below the map. And there's a link right here. This is download badge. And when you get there, it'll give you the options for the badges that are available to you. Um, Cause like we have top lists and if an attorney's on a top list, they'll have a special badge for that. Um, if you've been on the list for five years, let's say, then there's an anniversary badge. So anything that's available to you is here and you can just click on what you want and email it to yourself or your webmaster. Any other questions? Uh, you know, one more thing, just Stacy, on how I use that, and I'm clearly not getting paid for super by super lawyers to market their products, but I will, I will tell you this is super usable. Uh, you know, so it, it not only just goes in your, you know, potentially email signature block, it goes potentially on your website. You can use those badges for, um, you know. Um, graphics on LinkedIn, your social media. I mm -hmm. also add them to collateral materials and things like that. So. They're pretty versatile. Uh, if you do have this, this is a little bit of extra free mileage you can get out of this, this award. I'll stop talking. Yeah, and speaking of do's and don'ts, also keep in mind when the list comes out, um, all of this is like, the, when a list comes out in September, we have a window where we do sales for the print publications for about four months, and then a couple months to produce the publications. And then we have our public announcement date. So. The online side of things, any online marketing can happen in that earlier window. You don't have to wait for the print publications to come out, but we do have what we call an embargo date or a public announcement date. And that is when we, we want you to wait to post your badge or do any promotion on your own about your selection until that public announcement date, which should fall right around the day that the magazine comes out because we, we want to make the announcement but we have to do all these other things before. So we have to let you know several months earlier that you're on the list. So with badges, we do ask that you wait until the public announcement date to publish those. And we also offer promotional kits for anyone who's been selected and wants a promotional kit, I can email it to you. Just let me know you want it. And it's got you know, ideas for how to use the badge or templates for social media or what have you. But again, we just ask that you wait until the embargo date to use those. I noticed a lot of people this past year that did not, for some reason, it was just weird year where tons of people were like, I got picked. And I was like, wait, it's not 2021 yet. Like, yeah, it's it's one of those like gray areas, right? You're not supposed to do it, but we're so busy. We don't have time to hunt you down and tell you to stop doing it, right? We just ask you to respect the embargo day. But I think a lot of times people don't know. And then there are people who don't care. So it, it's kind of what it is what it is. We, we just, we hope that people will wait. Okay, anything else or shall I pass it to Ms. Barry? I had a question, I don't know if it's for you or for Barry, but on I'm just looking at the nominations now. There's not a place to do categories, which I thought I had to do last in prior years. Thank you, I appreciate that. So when we select an attorney for super lawyers, we ask for their practice area so that we know where we're going to put them in the magazine, but we don't ever select an attorney based on a particular practice area. We, we select them based on their merit and understanding that practice areas change. So I don't think that 
practice areas. I don't know. I don't ever. I actually don't ever get into the nomination window, but I don't think that's an that's part of it. You're just nominating the attorney, not the practice area for the attorney. Which is an interesting question for people who maybe have multiple practice areas that kind of diverge and maybe have a preference of where they might get listed. Like how how do you do that? Yeah. Well, when you data verify, you tell us what your main practice area is. Okay. And that's where we list you in the magazine. So in the magazine, you get listed under one practice area. Online, you can choose as many, pretty much as many practice areas as you want. So um, let's go back in here to Mark's. If we go back to his main page. Oops. While you're oh, doing that. Sorry, I'm not sure. Am I still sharing? Yes. No. Oh, okay, sorry. While you're doing yeah. that. Um, would the people that we're allowed to email and send stuff to be able to answer questions about how to show, you know, because there may be something that we wanted to, to maybe advertise more, but to be truthful, it's not a majority of our practice, you know, see what I'm saying? Can you ask the question again? Yeah, so I do equine law, horse law, okay. it's not a category anywhere. I'm a horse girl, I'm with you, okay. <laughs> But I show up like my categories online on super lawyers, you wouldn't really know that, right? So like business right. law or whatever, but maybe, I, you know, I was listed professional liability before because that's what I litigated for a long time, but now I'm doing this business law. Uh -huh. Like, but, you know, I would say maybe 20 or 30% or 40%, not a majority. Uh -huh. how, how does super lawyers work with somebody if they want to have their name show up under a certain category if they get selected? In the publication? or yeah. online well online it didn't seem like it mattered as much i don't know so if we're, you guys can see alternative dispute resolution here right yeah okay so mark gets to choose up to six main practice areas for his online profile to show up under and then under those six main practice areas he gets to choose as many subcat focus areas that apply right and so if he, he does a lot of top spots with us and that kind of thing, but if he only had the premium online profile, these are what determine where he's showing up, okay? So like Jay could go pick, if Jay did like one family case a year, he can go choose family if he wants. We haven't chosen, we haven't selected him because he's doing family law, but if he tells us he does family law, he can show up for family law. Especially now, I mean, people are reinventing themselves, right? Like you gotta be able to show up under areas that you're handling. Is that answering your question for the online side? And then I'll cover the print. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> okay. I want to make sure I get it answered. So I don't, maybe I'm not understanding. Are, so are you can, asking? Can she, can she create a, her own category called equine law? Sorry, would no. Would then, would then acknowledge? No, we are a very big company that moves slowly in some things and adding categories is one of those things that is very slow to do. I mean, it took us forever to add cannabis, right? So no, you can't create your own category. Now, if you were selected and you said, I want to get in front of my peers and tell them I do equine law, right? It's not a category we have, but... You could use the print publication for that. If we look at this year's Colorado publication and I, I'm gonna use someone that's familiar to me and I know why he did this this year. So I'm gonna use this as an example. Let me get to his ad. Okay, Mark Kaplan, he's a family attorney, has been a family attorney for years, but he's really starting to focus more on appellate work and complex cases. So he used this year to sort of make that announcement to his peers that that's really what he's focused on. Now, yes, appellate is a category with us, right? But if he did equine law, he could have talked about equine law in this ad. And that's what it would have talked about. So that's that's the way you get around the categories with super lawyers is you do something in the print publication. You can talk about whatever you want in the print publication, but you're still gonna come up under a particular category with your with your actual free listing. Okay, so, so the default when somebody gets selected 
uh, you guys choose what category they go under based on what we've put in our profile as our biggest percentage of practice area? Yeah, I mean, there's always a default based on the information that we have when we select you as what your main practice area is. But I talk to people all the time when, when we talk about doing their data verification and they're like, well, that's not really the mo what I do most. I do this, or this is what I want to focus on. So we just change and we, and we, data verification is a separate thing. And so we just, we're sending the information to the data team and we're saying, no, the main practice area is this area, put them under this for the magazine. Got it. Yeah. So one last thing, Stacy. So as a community, again, just like a law firm, when we, when we encourage our members to um, nominate other members, is that violative, viol in violation of the, your rules? Technically, you're not supposed to lobby for nominations, yes. Well, again, but... I'm, we're saying as a community, we should help each other, not kind of like a law right. firm says, hey, you all should nominate your partners and associates. Right. So again, I, I don't want to put anybody in a bad position. If you think that's stepping over the line when we're telling Again, we're not saying, hey, Margaret, you go, you go nominate Carolyn. All right. right. Carolyn, you nominate Jay and Jay, you nominate right. Stephen. And it, again, it's not that. It's like as a as a community, we're saying, listen, we can help each other. Supporting by, each other. By you know, uh, supporting one another through this process. Yeah, listen, you're not requiring anyone to do it. You're suggesting no. it's a good idea, but it should always be based on firsthand knowledge. So right. Carolyn should go nominate Marguerite if she is not familiar with her practice with firsthand knowledge. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing and I'm gonna let Barry take the ball. Fabulous. Hi everyone, I am familiar with several of you. I don't know if you're um, aware, but I am the local contact at uh, the Law Bank location off of Mexico. Um, Westlaw, that is Thomson Reuters Legal Research um, Division, is the area in which I focus on. And, um, you know, as you know, with marketing, it's important to have the tools to be able to practice. And so um, there's a few misnomers. One is, you know, Westlaw is so expensive, you know, and I get it. It is not an inexpensive resource, but you cannot afford not to have the best. And so be aware that packages and plans can be set up as large or as small um, as you would like. Um, we have a wonderful relationship and we have some special incentives um, that we've established with Law Bank. Um, what I'd like to do today is for those of you who are already familiar with, just take this as a grain of salt. I'd like to solicit feedback from you as we go on. So please don't um, think that this is all about just, you know, product knowledge and so forth. It's, hey, look, we have resources for every firm type. We have products that are for every size firm. And um, I'm the one that can help answer those questions. So with that being said, I'm going to touch on a resource that we launched about um, two years ago called Westlaw Edge. Um, it is a platform that um, is built off of artificial intelligence. Um, I'm going to share with you my screen real quick, and I'm going to dive into some of these features, but I'm also going to do it live so that everybody can see my screen. Um, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Um, let's see here. I'm grabbing that. Can you all see my screen? Oh, let me go back. Okay. So what I want to touch on is Westlaw Edge. There is a lot of content on Westlaw. Um, so bear in mind that plans are you know, set up based on your practice area. Um, Westlaw Edge, as I mentioned, is an in, you know, ingenious platform that is built off of AI. We built it um, with the understanding that the exclusive content of which Westlaw has, key numbers, head notes, um, and um, our researchers have done a great job to pre, um, create this platform. The five things I'm gonna touch on are the functions that um, we've launched on Westlaw Edge. There is Westlaw Next as well. I'm just sharing with you the newest and latest out there. Um, and with that said, I'm going to jump into these components. So I'm gonna talk about um, the new citator, which is called our key site overruling risk flag. I'm gonna touch on that. I'm going to talk about the document analysis tool. 
which is what we call quick check. I'm gonna talk about um, the West searching. I'm gonna go into our litigation analytics. And last but not least, I'm gonna talk about our statute comparison tool. But before that, does anybody have any questions when I jump into Westlaw? Does that sound like it's a good plan um, for everyone? Not everybody at the same time, please. <laughs> okay. Jerry, right. would you, with, whether at the end or beginning, whatever, just talk about uh, the relationship between Law Bank and Westlaw and all the good things you get by being a Westlaw, a Law Bank member? Of course. Through Westlaw, yeah. whenever, whenever you choose. Yeah, no, I'll touch on that right now as I'm trying to um, figure out. Um, okay. So, the relationship that Law Bank has established um, with Thomson Reuters Westlaw is that we have discounting available that you will not receive with any other um, platform that you go with. Um, you have me as the main contact. So should you run into a bind and need access, I'm more than happy to issue a trial password. Um, and ultimately, you know, we are a line of communication with resources that you have, such as reference attorneys. If you need help, they're available 365 days out of the year, um, you know, and 24 seven. But more importantly, just be aware that the relationship has been an establishment for as long as Law Bank has been in existence. And so our job and my responsibility is to make sure that you have the tools and resources to run your practice. So I hope I've touched on that, Jay, but any questions you guys have offline um, as it relates to what's available, what is there um, on Westlaw, we, we customize our plans based on your specific practice areas. Um, so uh, give me just one second. I, I wanna get into the internet. So bear with me one second, guys, I'm sorry. I use Teams normally, so I'm trying to get out of this so I can get into the system. Very okay. just the escape button to get out of that. Okay, hold on one second. Sorry about this, guys. Um, I'm having a moment. Hey, Barry, if you hit the yeah. escape button, it'll get you out of the full screen. Okay, perfect. Okay. I am where I need to be. Sorry, guys. I am working with a few different screens as we speak here. Okay. Okay. So, can everybody see my screen now? I'm logging into Westlaw. Yes, we can see it. Okay. So, for starters, um, when I sign into Westlaw, if you are able to capture your cost, as long as you sign in with your client identification code, um, we have what we call Quick View, which allows you to identify by all the research that you've done and the individual client that you're working on. So based on a weekly, bi-weekly, daily basis, you can generate a report. And that way, if you'd like to pass any of those costs on, you can do so. So as you can see here with the screen, I'm not familiar with um, how many of you have seen Westlaw Edge, but I can assure you that if I start to do a search, um, I can type in any type of question that I'm interested in looking at. Um, the algorithm here is much more sophisticated, so it's looking at um, a variety of things from the syntax to the question you're asking based off of black letter law. So once I get into the system, it's not only gonna answer my question, but it's gonna give me the most relevant um, case that answers that question. You can see that maybe you don't agree with our suggestion, but here's additional resources that are available. On Westlaw, you have filters, so you can identify and search a variety of different, um, more specific key areas. As I mentioned, our key numbers um, allow you to dive in and get much more granular on your search. Um, so that's a really nice feature that Westlaw has to offer. Um, so just in, in the sense of being able to ask a question, you can ask a slew of questions. Um, it's really um, very intuitive. Um, so, you know, that's but one of those features that I was mentioning. I will talk about the key site overruling risk flag. And I 
will not do it justice other than showing you this diagram. Um, let me just show you this slide here. Um, I need to go back. Okay. Okay. I don't know why it doesn't want to go to the slide. I wanted to. Okay. So, okay. Okay, so this is what I wanted to show you. So our key site overruling list flag. Now I'm sure most of you are familiar with the red and yellow flags. Does that sound familiar to everyone? Hopefully. Okay, so if a case has been overturned or, um, or negatively impacted, you're going to see a red or yellow flag. Um, but as an example, and this is exclusive to Thomson Reuters Westlaw, we have this key site overruling list flag. So you're going to see a um, you know, a triangle in the middle with an explanation point indicating that there is a concern, but it's in, in 2011 case one um, was good law until 2016 when case four explicitly invalidated case one, but case two and three came out in 2013. And what they did was they invalid and they implicitly invalidated the case. So in essence, you wouldn't have known that unless you actually took a closer look at our negative treatment. So just be aware of that. Um, that. That is an exclusive feature called our key site overruling risk flag. Um, now you might say, well, I could already do that. Well, time is of the essence and we don't all have a lot of it. So we created that based on what others have been asking for. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, that is a really nice feature. The next thing I'm gonna touch on is, um, does anybody have any questions about the key site overruling risk flag? So I have a live bunch here. Um, we're going to touch on a statute comparison component of Westlaw Edge. And so when you look at a statute, um, you will see that there can be multiple versions of a statute. Let me go in and grab a statute. So within the statute, you can see here that there's several options up at the top, but the most important thing is to see here that there's a compare version tab. So if I have multiple versions of a statute, I can actually go through this document. I can see the red line and the highlighted version where those you know, changes and or edits have been made. Um, it's challenging as I'm sure you're all aware to copy and um, you know, print and, and look at two versions of a statute, but this is something that we've added to Westlaw Edge just to make your life a little bit easier. Um, so that's that's what we call our statute comparison function um, on Westlaw Edge. Um, and then I'm going to transition into two very relevant components. And you know, when when Stacy was talking about um, analyzing and looking at verdicts, it's you know. It's helpful to understand what your peers are doing. It's helpful to also look at judges and understand um, others that have practiced in your area. Now, I want to caveat that by saying that um, not all district court judges are available in our system other than federal data, um, federal data, federal judges, just because we get it from the docket. But I will say that if I am looking up a judge, um, I have the ability to take a closer look at the judge and how he's ruled. I have the ability to look at what the district um, average is, and I can actually take a closer look at um, you know, what's been filed. So you can see here the defendant's filed motion, the motions to dismiss. Well, this judge has ruled um, you know, 870 times the district has ruled, and this judge, as you can see, the total time it's taken him. Um, the speed, you know, if you want to advise your clients, it's helpful to tell them how long you think it's going to take the judge to rule, which is 169 days versus what the district average is. So you're gaining some additional intel on this judge, his patterns. Um, you can see his experience, um, looking at what's on the docket, specific case types, participants, 
year, like I mentioned initially, you can actually look and take a deeper dive into um, more filters and so forth. Um, you can look at those motions. But the point I'm trying to make here is that by looking at this information, you can really get some additional insight on that judge, attorney, or law firm. Um, the precedence here is a great way for you to actually look at our key numbers, filter it down by the specific topic that you're interested in, and then see exactly where this judge has cited to these specific key numbers. You can see within the cases that he cited in um, how much it's been discussed and how recent it's been. So just that little bit of information goes a long way. You know, we have our expert challenges, so you can see um, who's been in front of this judge. You can see what's been on appeal. And then ultimately, you know, we can say all we say, but we, we have to reference where that comes from. So, you know, just as I mentioned initially, you don't need access to all this information. You can access this data as long as you see it in the initial screen. When you start to click into the content, you will receive warning screen decline, warning stream decline so that you do not incur additional costs associated with that. So, you know, just in a nutshell, this, this litigation analytics is um, just a nice way for you to get a better understanding of that judge. I will caveat that by saying that um, all federal judges and a majority of district court judges have access to this. So just knowing that um, is really important because you know they know a little bit of information on you. Um, so that that is our litigation analytics. And then I'm going to um, lastly share with you um, a feature called Quick Check. And so what this feature does, this Quick Check feature does is I can actually take a document, um, a motion and or a brief um, on my desktop. I can drag and drop it. And I'm going to choose one. And as the system loads, it's doing a variety of things. So it's checking the documents, it's analyzing it for the language, it's looking at the head notes, it's looking at the headers within it. Um, just so you all know, this, this information is secured. We do not do anything with it. As soon as it gets loaded into our system, it is erased. Um, but you know, we're looking at the key sites, we're looking at um, everything you could imagine within this document to give you some more relevant information. It's providing you with recommendations for um, cases that you may not have been aware of. It's looking at the quotations within um, your documents, um, you know, and, and it's letting you know where those differences are. So as we quickly look through this, you can see it's maybe a minute. This is not a very um, large motion. I'd say, um, you know, it's probably about, uh, not a, it's a brief, it's about 15, 20 pages. So it's not a very long one. Um, but as I start to go through this document, you're going to see that it's doing quite a bit. And um, it's also going to provide me with other recommendations that I may not have been aware of, whether it be briefs or secondary sources and so forth. Um, so as I quickly wait for it to load. It'll just take a second here. Sorry guys, it's looking at my citations, it's looking at a variety of different things as it goes through. Um, and then it's putting a report together for you. And as you can see, it's deleting the document from our system, so nothing gets stored. So I'm just quickly gonna go through this document and then I wanna touch on just one last thing on Westlaw Edge so that you can see it. Um, but, you know, as I have my headers here, you can see that what we're doing is we're going to provide you with cases that you have not cited to. So we're going to let you know what that case is that we're recommending, and we're recommending it based on other cases that you have put with, you know, put 
in your briefer motion. Um, and then we're going to provide you with a synopsis. So high level overview written by our attorney editors, giving you a little more context. You would not receive that through other providers, um, but our attorney editors go through a significant amount of scrubbing of the data to provide you with that information. As I mentioned, the recommendations are on this left-hand side, so you can see other resources, say, say it be briefs or secondary sources that we're recommending. We're also going to give you warnings for cited authority. These are, you know, if I repurpose an existing brief or I receive a, a brief from my opponent, I can go through and I can see, you know, how those cases have been cited to and whether or not I should be concerned about that. Um, so this is actually those cases, those statutes within your brief that are here. Now, I really like this feature. It's called our quotation analysis because if within your brief you have an ellipsis and or your opponent has that, if you don't know what they're missing, you have to go back to that case and make that assessment. So what we're doing is giving you that luxury to be able to see those differences. Um, and so you can see the unmatched and the matched citations. Ultimately, at the end of this, we're going to build a table of authorities. So we're really taking a closer look at your document. We're another side up set of eyes. Um, and we're here, as I'm sure you all are aware, to help answer your questions and get you up to speed. But you know, we talked about EDGE. I want you all to know that we have content for every single area of law. Whatever your practice needs are, your budget is, I will work with that. We will work with that. And thanks to my relationship with, you know, Law Bank, I know a lot of you, um, but, you know, we have a lot of tools to help. Um, we have practical know-how. We have public record access. We have tra treatises that are state, um, that are practice area specific that we cover. Um, so please, you know, don't hesitate. I promise I don't bite and I'm here to answer any questions and help you guys out if you are curious about how we can, um, you know, provide you with our Westlaw access. Do you have any questions, anyone, please? I have a, I have a question. So you mentioned the Law Bank has a special deal. Mm -hmm. um, what if I'm already a Westlaw user and love to know if there's something I can get for being a law bank member, just because well, it let's is. Take a look. Let's take a look at your subscriptions and we can evaluate that. You know, I'd be more right. than happy to do that. Um, yeah. so, you know, I basically have to like sacrifice my right arm to use Westlaw, but I like <laughs> it. So. I'm sorry, that shouldn't be the case. So let's have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, and do you use Westlaw Edge? Are you familiarized with this new platform? No, I don't. There's so many different Westlaw this is and that's, um, but I know I um, I use both. One of the reasons it's expensive for me is because I both have the case law research and I have practical law because I do both okay. business law and legal research. Sure. And sure. so um, I have to remind myself that's one reason I'm paying for that extra. Yeah, yeah, no, up. practical law is, is um, it's a phenomenal resource. I know several of you have had access to it and if you're not currently using it, it's gotten way better. There's information on oil and gas, entertainment law. So there's, and, and um, Marguerite, if your practice does evolve, you would have some of that coverage accessible as well within your package. So it looks like I signed into Westlaw Classic. Does that mean I don't have access to your Westlaw Edge? Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So the discussion today obviously was to talk about research, but let's at least have a conversation. I'll, you know, walk you through what options you might have and we can go from there. So. Barry, Margaret's at the, uh, at the, through the CBD office, through our uptown okay. office. Okay. So I don't know if that would be you or connect her with John. Yeah, I'll connect you over with John Klipka and okay. he can answer your question. So just like Stacy mentioned, there are two of her, there are three of me of which um, you know, we are all in different locations throughout the city. So I cover the, the Mexico location, but if you need anything or have questions after this call, please don't hesitate. I hope you found this helpful, everyone. I mean, the, the objective of this call is nothing more than know what your marketing resources are and how to advertise 
um, and be recognized in the community and then have the tools to help you find the cases and you know, secondary material and other resources that Thompson Reuters has to offer. Cool, thanks. Barry, Stacy. thank you very much for your time. Yes, so if, anyone, if anyone wants um, a document on best practices that can kind of walk through what I talked about with getting in and creating your profile and all that, let me know and I'll get that over to you. I would love that, Stacy, and I'm happy to include that in the next blast to the to the Law Bank community if you'd like. Okay, sure. And there was a question in the chat that I'd be curious to know too. Somebody asked, you mentioned emailing your research team. At oh, site. yeah. How, how at, uh, at Super Lawyers, is that embedded in our login or is that a email that we need to know? No, about? but I was thinking while Barry was talking that I forgot to give you that address. I'm sure they love me for giving this address out, but <laughs> it's SL as in Super Lawyers hyphen research at thompsonreuters.com. And also keep in mind, if you just go to superlawyers.com and scroll to the bottom, there's a frequently asked questions section and there's a section about the selection process. There's a lot of really good information there. And the, the research um, email address is in there as well. So helpful. Yeah, and then on Westlaw, this is where you'd find that phone number for the reference attorneys. You can live chat, contact us. We always solicit your feedback, so please don't hesitate to um, access that information and there's support and training available at the best. I'm sharing your email addresses. I hope that's okay. Um, thank sure. you and, uh, to Barry and Stacy and um, you know, hopefully we can we can keep this conversation moving and maybe even do another one of these next year as just kind of a booster shot on some of the, the offerings that we can work with all of you on. Sound good? Sounds great. Yep, Thank absolutely. you, everyone.